Hi everyone, I'm L and I play bass. I'm Matt, I sing and play guitar. I'm Chris and I play guitar. Me and Elliot actually met at like a weekend rock school when we were about 11 or 12. And um, th the roles were really defined there. Like I wanted to be the singer and write the songs and Elliot was uh, wanted to be a bassist. And then we met Chris in, at school um, around the same time and Chris always wanted to be a lead guitarist. So in terms of like the divvying up of tasks, it was um, it was pretty simple, everyone felt comfortable in their roles but um, it all started with just having a, a bunch of songs that I was writing at the acoustic at home and then us transitioning from covers um, into uh, just original stuff and I'm gonna having a crack at arranging it together no, you can reach me Actually, a big turning point was a song called, um, on our first record called In My Mind. And that was us kind of experimenting with um, just like darker sounds. I mean, um, we were getting into bands like Queens of the Stone Age. And um, by this point, uh, like Arctic Monkeys AM was, was two or three years old. And uh, I think that stuff kind of really bled into the way that we were thinking about riffs. So not making music that's like almost like cartoonly, cartoonishly heavy. We wanted to make stuff that was like um, groovier and kind of um, yeah, just played around with the more like sinister parts of life. I guess every record we've done, there's been one or two songs that kind of come out of nowhere, and we say like. That's the blueprint for this record. So, for example, the the new record, How Will I Know If Heaven Will Find Me, the opening song, How Will I Know, was one of the first that we wrote for the um, album. And that became the kind of North star of the record. And then maybe um, songs like Mother and Doubt It on Future Dust were very much that as well. It usually is that we do about 10 songs that sound like all the other stuff that we've done, and then something will sound really, really different. And then we'll go with that one. Um, you know, if that if that's something that really excites us, um, yeah. I mean, Mother just sounded really different to what we were doing. So we basically we usually go for pretty much every album. There's a good cull of like 15 to 20 songs before we get to that first song, and then we start the writing process all over again. Our managers specifically manage a lot of producers and songwriters. Um, we're actually the only band that they represent, so their their world is songs. Um, so that's um, been a big influence uh, of the kind of music that we've wanted to make, I think. Um, yeah, that's, that's the daunting one. Coffee stained your bed sheets, baby. Never knew that I was ready, whispering softly. Voices breaking with the dawn. We've been really lucky um, with the last three records. The amount of compromising has been virtually nil. We've always been able to write the record that we want to. There's been no, uh, no one like pulling the strings above us. No one um, cigar toting um, CEO pushing us in a in a, a direction that we're not comfortable with. Um, we've always been um, picking our direction and and. And they've all, the labels have always been great at facilitating what we want to do. Um, it's a it's it's a dream, definitely. It's a dream, and especially for um, more, I would guess, judging by the last fifty years, more traditional ways of doing um, what uh, you know, music, being in a in a band, collaborating, um, having live instruments, guitars, bass, drums, and all that stuff. Having a label has definitely helped us because it's not a cheap thing to do. 
Um, we're not a guy in a laptop um, doing DJ sets everywhere and making um, a ton of money for not a lot of outgoing. It's a big old clunky machine. <laughs> Live shows are a space for us to um, change the arrangement and usually spread things out a little bit and add some like different elements. But I think it, we've always been conscious of um, keeping it simple in the studio and um, keeping it band based. And, and there's a, I think there's a um, palpable energy that a live band can achieve that not a lot of other. Um, ways of doing it can. We've basically put out um, live recordings before over the last couple of records and that was really re well received. And I think the more that we push the live show away from sending like the record, um, then, the, then the justification for a live album becomes, uh, increases. So, um, and I think the nature of the Amazons um, audience is we have a lot of people who come to multiple shows on a tour and um we're as much playing it for someone who's never seen us before as as these people um and we recognize them every single show so um we almost want to keep it fresh for them and so they can differentiate between shows instead of giving them like uh basically the same show every time i love um and I, i'm the same with you know Springsteen or Dylan or the Grateful Dead or uh, so many artists like that who um, use the live um, performance as uh, another space to be creative um, and over years you can piece together some really incredible um, alternative dis discographies and different arrangements like if you think of Dylan Shelter, Shelter from the Storm has been arranged and recorded live through bootlegs and official recordings about 10 different times. And that's just an album track from one of his albums. Um, and, you know, the, the, the fan base can debate about whether they like the 77 version or the 91 version or whatever it is. But that, that stuff really helps me dig in and um, invest in an artist more. So that's something that we, we want to do ourselves. Uh, so the new album's called How Will I Know If Heaven Will Find Me. Um, we put it out in September last year and um, and we're basically on the tour for this record. Um, I would say this is the last show, really, of the official touring of this record as it stands right now. Um, and it's been quite a journey. Um, a lot of it was written over COVID, um, uh, over lockdown, when we were all separated. And um, mostly inspired by... The relationship I've been in, um, I've been trying to keep together during during the during lockdown, um, it was a long distance thing between me and someone here in Los Angeles. Um, so, as you can imagine, a global pandemic probably exacerbates the uh, channels that we can see each other in. So there was about an eight month period that we didn't see each other, um, and a lot of the album is inspired by that, really. So um, it feels really apt and fitting that we're going to finish the U.S. tour here. Um, yeah, feels interesting. It's cool. I would say a lot of the new record we started with, quote unquote, a demo um, that we'd been doing at Chris's house. So there's a lot of additional, well, co-production actually between Jim Abyss, who we went into the studio with at the end of the process, and Chris. Um, we were doing so much at his, so much at your flat, especially a song called Say It Again. A lot of that was created at your flat and uh, in London and one by one. And yeah, it's kind of a Frankenstein monster of, of different places and different times that we recorded it over that, over that um, COVID period. 
So, and 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 really, that against that process and that result against the second record and the first record, which was really just us in a live live room playing together. So um, with uh, without many overdubs, especially the second one, we really didn't want to do overdubs. Um, we'd been influenced by the Black Keys record, Let's Rock. Yeah. And they were like, no overdubs. Mm -hmm. Or like, barely any overdubs. And we were like, cool, we'll do that as well. Um, it's a lot of pressure on vocals with it. Mm, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure. Um, but I think my voice has got better. I think this new album is the best my voice has been. Yeah, that's I'm not a natural singer, but I've always wanted to sing. Um, I've always been able to sing loud, but I like, in terms of like technique and uh, technique and performance, I've, I've been up and down. So um, this new record is the best I've sung, I think. Well, the immediate future, we, we head off to Frankfurt for a couple of festivals, Hurricane and Southside in Germany. And then um, we've got a bunch of festivals in the UK, Reading and Leeds being one of them. Um, Reading is our like, ho hometown, so this is going to be a big, big moment for us to play the main stage. Um, and then I think we, uh, we're actually going to play in Mexico City for Corona Capital Festival. So those are our live obligations, and I think... Um, Straight back into the studios as soon as we get home. I, uh, I, with no problem putting out music. Um, too many artists, I think, are um, holding off for five, six years during the prime of their create creative lives. I think, like, will it, if we're really honest, like, the emotional urgency that you can achieve um, has a sell-by date. Yeah. I think. Honestly, I, I'm not saying that um, artists can't come up with um, interesting work past their 40s, but I'm just saying that most of the artists have probably done their best work by that point. Yeah. Um, and, I'm, and I don't know why. I just think I, that's probably the case. So um, the race is on. I'm 29 now, so I've got about 11 years left. You can find us at, at the Amazons on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram. and Twitter. Um, YouTube, at the Amazons. Facebook, I believe, at the Amazons. Pretty much. Um, do we have anything a little bit more niche than that? Uh, oh, we have a Discord. Yeah, we do have a Discord, yeah. How uh, do you get to our Discord? Uh, Search for the Amazons, I think. At the Amazons on Discord. Hi, we are the Amazons and you've just been buzzed. Yeah.